information that we don't expect you to, to for fact. What we want you to do is we're going to give you the places to go to find the information for yourself. We don't try to teach you anything here. We just try to show you where to go to find the right information and then you can learn it for yourself. Okay and if you're going to say no this isn't the way it is well then you read it yourself. So, so <laughs> you didn't hear it from me. Yeah. So, so Generally, we give out a lot of uh, websites and things for people to look up uh, different things. One of the things I generally talk about a lot in the meetings is the uh, CAFR funds. Okay, uh, if uh, any of you know anything about the CAFR, uh, that, that, uh, it's a comprehensive annual financial reports that all the corporations have to fill out each year, and all these government corporations fill these out. And the best place to go for that is to go on CAFR1.com. And, uh, and there's a guy on there by the name of Walter Burian, and uh, he's uh, out, and if you would, you know, take notes and stuff, because we're going to be putting out a lot of information, and you will forget probably 99% of it by the time you leave here. So that's C-A or C-A-F-R-1, it's C-A-F-R-1.com, and, and there's a, uh, there's a, a DVD on there that you can listen to on there. We can give you one of these before you go. It's called The Biggest Game in Town. <coughs> that Walter Burian is on there. I don't know if he's upgraded this one, you know, because this has been several years ago that he put this one out. And uh, uh, you can take uh, one of these, you know, with you when you go. And there's several other ones here, too. Uh, Corporation Nation is another one. Uh, talks about the uh, United States corporations and stuff. And since the uh, government of the United States is made up of an excess of 185,000 different corporations. And uh, so basically they're, you know, the government is for profit. You know, it's not supposed to be in competition with the people, but it is for profit. And so that's what we're dealing yeah. with, and that's kind of what we talk about here. So, but one of the things that, that I like to talk to people about is the... Uh, what did I call it? <laughs> I forgot it again. <laughs> man. Oh, hierarchy of man. Hierarchy of man. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the hierarchy of man. And and does everybody here know what the hierarchy of man is? Okay. You know, we're all man. You know, everybody here is man. It's either man or woman. You know, it's all the same. Both genders. Okay. And what what I what I like to do is show you. <coughs> how this works. What we have here is we have uh, man. <laughs> and uh, in the hierarchy of man, the way we figure this is how did man get here? Created by God. Exactly. Okay. All of us Christians feel that we are created by a higher power or we're created by our creator, which we call God. Okay. So God is over man. Okay, now, man, see, God created man, so God owns man, okay, because whatever you create, you own, right? Okay, so man then creates, like it says here, we can, <coughs> we can go to a little document that a lot of people don't read, it's called the Declaration of Independence. <coughs> Okay, I didn't bring my glasses here either, but, uh, but in, in the Declaration of Independence it says that that all men are created equal. That's right. Okay, so what does that mean? Okay, that all men are created equal. Nobody's better okay. than anybody else. 
Yeah. So everybody is equal. Mm -hmm. So say that, and this is what I try to get through to a lot of people, is that just before, before the law only. Pardon me? We're not created equal otherwise. Just yeah. before the law. We're equal before the law. Yeah. Right. Well, well, we're, we're still we're we're created we're, equal by God. We're all created equal. When, we, when we're placed on the earth, when, when we've been given domain over the earth, dominion of the earth, then uh, all men are equal in God's eyes. That's right. In our creator. So he created us equal. And so if one man can tell another man what they can and cannot do, then isn't it also equal, if you're both equal, then the other man can tell you what you can and cannot do. See, so we have to kind of be careful how we handle that. Okay, because whatever we tell somebody else, they can also tell us. Because we're all on the same plane. Okay, and so so now, now to go on down a little bit further here, when it says that we have uh, unalienable rights given to us by our Creator, and these are rights that nobody else can take away from us. Okay, and and these rights, these these rights, some of some of these rights is life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Okay, but that isn't all of the rights. There's a lot more rights than that. They're unalienable rights. You know, they cannot be a lien cannot be placed upon them unless you give your consent. Okay, to. Uh, Say, give those rights to somebody else. Okay, and then, and so then, it goes down here a little further, and it says that governments are instituted among men. Okay, so then, what we have here is we have government down here. Okay, and that's below man. Okay, and this is the way the hierarchy works. Okay, so, so then, so then, man created government. So then man owns government. Okay. And, then, and so that's why in, in the Declaration of Independence it says that the, uh, that men then, uh, that, that the government derives their power from man, from the people. Okay. So, so then we start getting into some of these other things here that, that we've talked about in a lot of the meetings that uh, where a lot of the codes and things are, are called laws. Okay, they introduce codes, and they call these laws. Well, these are not laws; these are color of law. Okay, and there's a big difference. Okay, because a code and uh, and statutes and all of these things are basically their legislative rule of a society, given the force of law within that society. Okay, or to those who wish to be governed by that society. Okay, and it's all it's all written out in the Declaration of Independence. Now, I, I've done some research on this, and I found that that about one percent of Americans have, have ever read the Declaration of Independence. Okay, and then furthermore, <coughs> about one percent of them even understood what they said. <laughs> So it's a very small percentage. See, and it's all pretty much spelled out in the Declaration of Independence. And a lot of people will feel that they have constitutional rights, for example. Well, we don't have constitutional rights. We have inalienable rights or unalienable rights. God-given rights. See, the Constitution, and it says in it that it was, it was designed for the control of the government. It's to control the government. Okay. So, so now, uh, and it also says that the uh, that that the power deri is derived from the people. Okay, that the government has. Then it's the consent of the people. It's, they get they gain their power from the consent of the people. So, so what we're what we're going to do is we're I'm going to have Ernie come up here. And he's going to tell you about a whole bunch of stuff that I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> or very little. Okay, because we have talked a little while. So, but uh, but uh, uh, he's pretty sharp on a lot of this stuff. And he's basically going to give us a history lesson from what I understand. And so, so but, uh, but I just wanted you to understand that, you know, what the hierarchy of man is. 
and how it actually works. And then when, because see the government, then they'll, they'll come down here and they'll, they'll, have, they'll supposedly have laws, okay? They'll introduce these laws, but these are color of laws, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass out some, uh, some pages here that you can have, and it shows you what colors of law is. We can go ahead and just kind of pass them all around. Take one and just pass them around here. And that, and that is one of the codes there, or that's two of the codes. That's the United States codes. That's in Title 18, United States codes. And it's uh, uh, 241 and 242, and it tells you what color of law is. But if you start reading a lot of the codes and stuff, you'll find that a lot of them are really conflicting. Mm -hmm. They conflict with each other. And, uh, and uh, our uh, system doesn't really want to recognize them either. They just want people to uh, uh, obey these codes when they don't apply to us. Mm -hmm. These codes apply to government officials. They don't apply to us as men. Thank you. So, so now I'm going to have uh, Ernie come up here, and he's going to kind of tell you what he's got in plans here, and then after he's all done whipping up on you, then I'll come back and try again. Okay? Thank you much. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. My name is Ernie Tutelfta. I have a nickname that you'll find in the Joel Bonnier story. But they call me uh, Ernst the Impaler. Uh, that is a nickname that was kind of laid on me by a family uh, because I have this odd characteristic of finding out the absolute truth and, the truth and then sticking it right to the wall as it runs by me. <laughs> Uh, and it's that sort of knowledge that enables one to begin to be able to seize courtrooms as per the reason why I'm here in front of you guys tonight. I ain't no hero. I ain't no expert on anything. I'm 51 years old. I've had properties in Idaho and in Manhattan. I've jacked up big houses and caused them to be moved and put my family in them just to watch the bankers wiggle out of it through line three years later by breaking the contracts and me being left powerless. Uh, you know, it's the same old story everybody's got. Ain't no different than the rest of you. I'm made out of flesh and blood and bone and a good old American temper like all you guys have got. And I uh, am sick of being held captive. For years we've talked about freedom. For years we've uh, revered our system without ever knowing that it's not our system does not represent you and I. It does not stand for us in any way of the imagination at all. It stands for a select little group of nobility. Uh, you'll find them. I have a whole table full over here of documents. Please, I want you guys to go and get them and do it at break because you're going to want some of it to keep up with me as I go through stuff. Terms of art is one of the most powerful pieces of information. It is the way you bind the strong man. It is the hidden language of the court system, and uh, it absolutely works. So I brought that down. Uh, you will find a document called Ends of Court. I double N S of Court. And you will read in their, their own stuff where they begin in the 14th century. We'll be talking uh, Masonic, Freemason, we'll be talking Vatican Papacy terms, uh, we'll be talking dates that exceed the Garden of Eden and the things that existed here in principality fashion of demonic hierarchy before Adam and Eve were injected into it. Things that had already gone to war against that which had created them 
but you are not called God, and had made war on him, and he on them, things that never sinned against you and I. Okay, we weren't him. They fought against God. And it is this bunch that over the many, many, many centuries, many centuries, okay, uh, have brought this tremendous evil upon all peoples of the earth everywhere. Uh, we are not uh, exclusive. <laughs> there is no race on the face of the earth that uh, is not tainted by this bunch that we're facing. Uh, I'll have to tell you, if you think we're going to eliminate them, uh, that's completely wrong. They are death without ever dying. It is possible to capture the temporary host that appears as a human body that they're operating in temporarily, maybe a hundred years if you look at some of them. Uh, but at the end, that host that appears as a Rockefeller, uh, you name it, in the Illuminati's, you're looking at something that is older than time itself because Rome is the one that came up with the idea of time so they could regulate the people of the land for power. It's uh, demonic, we call it demonic, and it is what is empowering this evil. That's the generator. What powers the generator, the fuel of that generator, is our ignorance. How are you going to know your, uh, your enemy if you can't identify him? Okay, and how are you going to be successful at war? How are you going to help anybody to win anything if you don't exactly know how to pinpoint the enemy? Like I said, I'm not an expert on anything. I've just done a lot of uh, research, really, really, really deep. Uh, places where I don't know if anybody's uh, been there before. There's not very many footprints, I'll tell you that. Some of the stuff I've uncovered and come forward with, uh, well, I don't think there's been proclamations like this since probably the time of Martin Luther, 1540, when he came out. And you have to remember, when you look at all these names of old, you think of Thomas Beckett in 1112 uh, uh, A.D., who was murdered on Christmas Day of that year for pinpointing one of the demons that uh, was a Pope Benjamin at that time, and uh, he also bore another name called Roger upon the Bay. Okay, and uh, Beckett said, uh, you are the Eos Incitor Militiae. You are the cause of all this evil. Okay. These things are shapeshifters. They morph. They move like a quick spot of electricity. They'll travel through the electronic grid like the matrix. They will inhabit stone. They will inhabit water. They will inhabit plant. They will inhabit the human body, which is their premium thing. And the reason why is because the human body affords them what they do not have. They get the five extrasensory perceptions of God's fullness, particularly the procreation ability to make more of their kind. And from what I can research on, they're maybe not very successful at it, and maybe it's by design. There's probably not more than a million of them that regulate the entire world. It's just a slick little bunch. Okay, you'll find uh, in the ends of court document, which I uh, should just let you guys all go get it so you can be looking at this stuff while I talk. In fact, I'm going to have you do that. I really need you to, I need you to have the paperwork in hand. So you guys go on. I've got books up here that you brought down with us. I can't sell these, but they're $40 books, and before you lay the money out, you ought to know what the content is. So... Where's so in a political term, the actual no, actually it's the media, media, which means book, or yes, theater, and the theater right. is in the books. Right. Yep. That's yep. where libraries. Truth be known, all of us here yeah. should be Democrats, right. and we are liberals. Right. Because you know, one of us here wants to be chained and anchored to what is called the Gibber Monster right. in Genesis 6 4. Right. Can you the Gibber Monster, <laughs> you see, is the many fisted crusher destroyer of right. all. All right. And that is the judicial system that regulates Congress, regulates the states, and regulates us as a result. Okay? We want to be liberated from him. All right, well, you can't make him go away. But what you can is with this kind of knowledge, you can capture that gibber monster. All right, that's a Hebraic name for a many-fisted crusher, destroy, a cannibal, tyrant, bully in Genesis 6 verse 4. You can capture that thing if you're aware that he exists. Right. All right. And when you capture their system, 
through proper knowledge and realize you're not a fiction anymore like the Gibber Monster is going to try to tell you to get you to succumb, when you figure that out, then you can capture their system, their monster, turn him around, and he'll go to war against his handlers, which appears as the judicial system, to the forefence, remember that word, the forefence of your title of nobility, which is your proper person name. Doesn't mean King John Smith, although it does. Under ecclesiastical law, we are all equal kings and queens. That's it. According to ecclesiastical law declarations, I have no more value as a king than King John Smith, King Austin, Queen Linda. Same. We're all under one great king. All right, and the reason why I know that is so is a not only what I fly under and carry in my heart and know I've seen it have standing, okay, but it is because for a true offer of fraud to have standing, uh, for for right to exist, there has to be a wrong. Without it, how are you going to make a choice? If everything is right, a friend of mine I was talking to a coffee the other night at Flying J in Belgrade, he's a farmer, he says, you know, he said, wrong has to exist, has to. You can't ever get rid of it. Because if you get rid of it, you're back to tyranny. Everything is one color. You have no choice. It is absolutely uh -huh. gone. This is part of the reason why you can never eliminate the demonic realm that is the driving force behind all this. They have to be there. It's necessary. Or there would be no word called choice. There would be no free will. You would never know anger. You would never know shame. You would never know fear. You would never know these things that have caused you to assemble here tonight. There has to be something that engineers what we like and don't like. There has to be reasons for it. The trick is, in righteous wrath against them, don't take it too personal. We're going to cover a word here in a minute called obligation. Obligation, well, I guess we ought to just cover it. <laughs> Let me write it up. Let me write it up. Let's see. Let me get this professional eraser out here. We have been trained, hypnotized, and through the system of all chemical science, we have been turned into Aaron's golden calf. At the end of this whole process, we have become their goal. All right, well, uh, we'll start out of your obligation of people's hidden. You've all heard obscure. Okay, this is word work. When I do word work, because I'm not a very smart fellow, I do a lot of reference. I work with six sets of encyclopedias. When I go to war on a word and I go down the rabbit uh, trail, I go right to the bottom of the hole, I find the rabbit, and I run right over top of him, and I leave tracks to prove that I was there. <laughs> okay? So I'm very careful about what I claim. And you also have to remember, even in more ancient history of the Anglo-Saxon language, which is the language of death, is that the first culture of purity on the face of the earth is known as the Etruscan culture. It supersedes ancient Babylon by about 8,000 years. There, at that time, was a group of people uh, under a different name than we know them as now. They were called the Yehudi Diaspora, the desperate ones. Lawless, wild, cannibalistic, uh, no form of control. Complete destroyers and consumers of everything, everywhere they went. Right here, sitting here tonight, that same little bunch appears as what people think are Jews. All right, remember what the King James talks about, this very thin ice, and this is where our people begin to back away because the race thing is going to come forward. I'll tell you right up that Jesus was a racist, and I'll take you through his words here in a little bit. It is all done under obligation. Ob officially means hidden in the Greek language. If you're going to fight the devil on his own term, call his own kingdom, call Hades, you have to know his language. Why are you aware that his language is not his language? It is based on a language called Etruscan. Right. 
who had an excellent phonic system, an excellent alphabetical symbolized system. Uh, we could probably run it back oh, 12, 14,000 years. It would be pretty accurate for the Etruscans. The Hodi Diaspora Spora committed genocide. <laughs> what that is? Elimination of the genes, the elimination of entire groups of people. And Clinton was an office. What was the big to do over in Africa between the Hoodoos and the Tutsis? Remember that mess? How many people died? There was a million people that perished when Bill Clinton had the means. He could have stopped that genocidal mess. You see it in Syria right now. All right, some of the same bunch that are called Zionists, more accurately, are in there. They're the appearance of the CIA and they're ramping up trouble on both sides laying accusations on both sides, financing and weaponizing everybody on every hand for mass murder, which is what they need to get their booming god to come forward because he is Mars, the god of war. Mars, add my room to my return all figures into astrology. So this is what happens to the Etruscans from these guys. They get genocide to the man. All right, now, the Yehudi Diaspora, they take the alphabet of the uh, Etruscans and they turn it around backwards and upside down all their alphabetical symbols. This is what they did with the Etruscan language. They inverted it and they turned the symbols upside down. That became Greek. Okay. Greek, which by 1118 becomes as the Germanic Anglo Saxons take over Rome, what we call English, what we're speaking here tonight. Now, you're all common sense thinking people, what have I just written on here? What's the sum of that equation of mass murder? You and I are caught in a trap of speaking what? A bunch of sounds that have been turned into symbols that are based on what? Genocide. Satan. That's right. Mm -hmm. Why are we not able, as Mr. Miller has here, why are these laws not enforced? Can someone tell me why these laws are not enforced? Because everything is backwards and upside down. Here comes the rest of the world. I <coughs> this is critical information. This is why you're not winning. All black gate. It is a holy Roman. I should put un just to remind what side I'm still on. Unholy uh, Roman empirical. Order. Order. Bearing. Mark. And that is for uh, to protect uh, assassins of Rome. So we're going to put it because they kill the value of the people. Assassins. Rome, or maybe I should know it that way from this better way from Rome. Okay, bearing mark and seal, which is the seal of whatever king is ruling at the moment, including tonight, as we're sitting here. Whoever one world authority is, and remember Obama uh, about, uh, what, three months ago succeeded in putting the Vatican under his foot. Mm -hmm. okay. We're only two ticks off from having a full-blown antichrist according to the prophecies in the King James. Just two ticks left. That's all there is. Okay. And seal of 
whatever king of them all. I gotta write this out for the camera's sake and then I'll erase this and we'll do much more. Of the moment. Okay. We're on empirical order. It is a specific. Do you see what we got here? They're backwards and upside down on its head based on Greek, based on Anglo-Saxon, called English, is Oblygate. They are under empirical order to conduct their judicial business in a manner that is reverse and inverse, and that is what Oblygate means. You guys know that uh, this line right here, what symbol does that represent? That's a word right there. That simple line is a word. You know what it is? You cross it, unless you're really wise, when you go to court. What do you have to cause through? Bar. That's right. Why do we herd livestock through? A gate. A gate. gate. See the word gate? See the word lie? It's only missing the E. Why? Who knows? What are they? Liars and murderers all the way through, and every word has been twisted and tampered and misshapen and misspelled. It's had spellings and curses laid on the entire language. We don't know about it because it is all hidden. And we speak their language of death, their curses upon us. We speak it for them because we don't know because it's hidden. So when we go to court and we make pleadings, mm. what pleads? What pleads? <coughs> Why plead? Yeah, are you a beggar? Oh my God, you're not a beggar. Why are you pleading on that high priest to death? That thing that's wearing a black robe and is a death angel and has no honor whatsoever. None. It is there to uh, see to it. You go through the rendition program. We'll cover that here. Have you got that good on the camera, ma'am? I think so. Okay. And do you feel like I'm good on the vocals here? I don't want to shout folks out of the uh, place. <laughs> we'll find no, out. Got to be heard. <laughs> so the, the power. Okay. <laughs> the power is in the spoken word. Power is in the spoken word. So just for the sake of the camera, we'll give that two seconds. And backwards. And remember, backwards equals retroactive. Ah, now we're back before the Garden of Eden. Another word for hidden is also occult. Beautiful. Perfectly said. It's a total cult. A it cult is called yeah. the Roman cult period. Alright, and you can look this up in your encyclopedia. The Roman cult period. The judges, the various layers of judges, not all judges being equal. Okay, they have ranks and degrees because they're Freemason. Mm -hmm. Masonic in origin, the word free being attached to the penal colony of the 1750s that appeared as America. It was a penal colony. Okay. Well, the various judges that are here are under ends of court. You have that document in your hands. I suggest you have a look at it. They are members of what is called the ends of court. The ends of court find their beginnings in history in the 14th century. Every certified member of the bar is a member of that document, ends of court. Right? A key piece of information to know. This is why we're failing at everything we try to do. A, we don't have a full knowledge, and so we're like the dog that returns to his vomit, the hog that returns to the wall, because we think that we have a roof that appears as, I'll show you what my constitution looks like, it's not mine. I know now it wasn't written for me, and that ain't mine either. Who's that belong to? That's right. Oh, wait a minute. That belongs to the Federal Reserve? Right. Well, I thought the national debt was yours. No. The national uh -huh. debt is a creditor. Uh, belongs That's to right. the debtors. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so, the creditors. What do we got? 16 trillion, 200 trillion. Belongs to Ben Bernanke and Timothy Gardner. All right, this is what passes in my pocket. I carry with me everywhere I go. 
not for the protection of us, but it's all value of God in heaven above as a daughter or a son of the King of Kings. We'll get to that in another document that's in your hand in just a minute. Now, I want to read something to you here out of uh, Article 1, uh, Section 10, Line 8. This is part of the things that are forbidden to the states to bring forward. Now, I, I, I've got to skip just tons here. It's really unfair to host quick meetings. You may mess them up because uh, it takes years to figure this out. I hope you guys are way smarter than you get like that. Okay. If I can show enough high points to you, maybe we can speed it way up. Time is not on our side, although time may just about be ours forever here. And <laughs> judging by the looks of things, so maybe the battle's about over. Anyway, one of the things that is forbidden to the states to uh, become involved in, Section 10 says, No state shall enter into any, and then if you skip the first seven lines, which you'll be swinging back through them in the course of study, states are not allowed to bring forward any law impairing the what? Obligation, Obligation of contracts. Ah, you know what that contract is? Yeah. They want to make that contract is with Rome. Yeah. Through yes. Great Britain as the face. And the Freemasons made sure that they got it written in here so that this crap could continue right on yeah. to blame the people and keep us ensnared in a language of death and keep us as the perpetual guarantors of their debt. Your name is what backs this. Why does this work? Why does it work? Faith. Faith. That's right. It works because it says, in God we trust. Which God? The Greek one? In Rome? In Italy? Or that one? Why does that work? You know who that is on the front of that thing? Who is that? Jackson. That's right. What's his history? Why was he sent here? Why was he sent here? He was sent here to track down the Indian tribes by the utilization of the Jesuit priests. Because some of the Indian tribes bear Hebraic bloodlines. And that which is uh, totally against everything that is Hebraic or mankind out of Adam is desperate to find them and know exactly where all that kind is at. So that it has a chance of making everything that is Adamic go extinct. If you were the devil, and you wanted God's son. How are you going to do it? How are you going to take war against the supreme creator of the universe, lay a competent challenge to his son, challenge the war angels and all the myriads that we know exist, we well, you know there's tons of them. Huh? Uh, a fellow told me the other day that I was very successful, better than Obama, because I actually created jobs and got some of the angels in the employ. <laughs> Keeping me breathing. <laughs> How are you going to do it? You create an army and you trick them. Yeah, but they already lost. They lost one time before. How are you going to get them to believe in you this time? Why should they? They've lived for millennia, time unknown. Cursed. Well, what's going to make this time successful? What's your evidence going to be when you come to that Supreme Court? When you walk in there and say, move over, God. I'm the big bad dog now. How are you going to do that? Well, it's all based on evidence. You are evidence of God. Your names, your title of nobility has proper, natural, godly value tied to that name. We curse that value when we put faith in something that is of the occult, witchcraft, that mess right there. We bring down the value of our names when we say, yep, that's money. And I take that out, and I buy 20 bucks worth of something from Mr. Austin here. I hand him this here chunk of witchcraft curse paper. I shake his hand. I say, thank you, sir. What's he got? Death. That's right. And beyond that, what's he got? He's going to put that where? In his pocket. It sounds like you give me death and death. That's right. Death and death. That thing, that form of currency, bears curses all over it. 
the single dollar bill has the Bohemian owl uh, of the Bohemian Grove on the shoulder of the one dollar. It's got the Cletus constellation on the back at the top of the eagle. You name it. It's cursed, and we pack it around us because we believe it. If this had been an actual transaction, what would have really transpired there? You what thought we were getting the summer? better end of the deal. I'd have loved it. Yeah. Yeah. But this is all I got to work with. Sorry, Mr. Olson, I can only give you this. I don't have a ton of gold. I don't have one piece of gold. I got one piece of silver, and I bought it because I don't give a fig about it. It's just I like the buffalo on it, and it happens to be that big round. <laughs> <laughs> Can't eat it. Might melt it down and shoot it one these days. But so what happens? Now, all of us engage in this on a daily basis. You guys know about the illegality of the Federal Reserve Christmas Eve of 1913, how it was all crap and snuck in. I have a portion of the 1871 corporate constitution in that briefcase right there. And even it, under incorporated law, even it forbids the creation of the Federal Reserve. They blew that all the heck for the second time on the eve of Christmas, 1913. Says that they're a creature from Jekyll Island. Yes, sir. Yep. <clears throat> you guys haven't read that book, you need to pick it up. So what happens? Every day we go out, we whip this stuff up off of our person where we carry what else? What's that? Do you know the a contract. That is called an adhesion contract. Mm -hmm. What is an adhesion? It's based on another word that we yeah. speak. Adhere. So it sticks to you. Mm -hmm. Like a disease, a bacteria. Like what? A curse. Like a curse. It sticks to you. Now, this one here has all of them, okay? This is actually a coffin. A what? This is a coffin. Okay. All right, I told you I've had to learn to speak backwards and see everything backwards, and now I've found the actuality. Everything we think we perceive is a uh, complete lie, and everything that we've been taught not to think is where the actual truth is going to be found. Orwellian speak. Yeah, Orwellian speech, exactly, okay? This is a coffin. It has a photo of what on it? The deceased. Supposed to be you. Yeah, yeah. He appears as me, that dirty little bugger. It's all right. He gets all the blame, not me. He's a part of their gibber monster, and I've learned to capture him and turn him around, and now he fights to the forefence of my kingdom. I'm not fiction. You'll notice something else on here. You'll see my title of nobility abbreviated, and once you figure this out, you never ever abbreviate your title of nobility. You write your name in full. Okay? King John Smith, King Austin, you guys, you write your names in full. Proper spelling. The spelling remains the same. Okay? Majuscule letter at the beginning, which means you're a big ass in terms of art, and you'll read it for yourself. I'm not pulling your leg. <laughs> and the minuscule letters are there so that they can identify you as a little ass when you refuse to recognize them either way. And that is all in your document there in terms of art, which ain't yours, by the way, it's their news. They wrote it, and in it is found the only way that we'll ever win. Do you notice that something happened in this coffin? How come my name over here, my title of nobility, just like yours on this plastic coffin, looks like this over here and over this like here? Words printed in all capitalized fictional letters. I know Mr. Miller's done a great job on teaching you guys about the fiction thing of the corporations. What happened in here, from here to there, was called a mass murder. Okay, this is a grand identity theft. Grand means majuscule. Majuscule means capital. Capital crime, capital sin. It is capital identity theft in this coffin right here, the state has killed me underneath the Holy Roman Empirical Order. They have mark and seal over them that appears as the seal of the United States and the seal of Montana, which incorporated it under the Buck Act of, what, 1941? And uh, the king of the moment is who? Whoever the world ruler is. It varies. Okay? It's the king of the moment. Of what is it? Retroactive. And because it's retroactive, 
what can't happen? What is the next claim that comes forward under this identity theft that they say you can't do once you figure this out as long as you're a property, a citizen of the state? See, they wrote this stuff so that people would think that if you go against the tenets of the British Commercial Charter that appears as our Constitution, that it's like sacrilege. I've been there. I tell my boys, no flag goes by, no glory goes by. You stand straight as a ramrod and you let them tears run down your face. That's the color of your country. Men, real men, real kings, real queens. Fought and died for that. Okay? Right. You say the Pledge of Allegiance, and you say with pride and love, and just like that, and don't you ever be ashamed. Okay? I didn't comprehend that what I was telling them was the very thing that was actually going to lead them to their death. The next thing that you're forbidden as a state citizen to engage in, you can't pass any bill of attainder. Winter, line six. And it was so important to the Freemason half, or there's not 12 of them uh, in the Founding Fathers, it is so important to them that that doesn't happen that they mentioned it twice. Look up here. No bill of attainder. Or ex post facto law. Now, I've done tons of hours of work on this, and I ain't no expert, but I'll tell you what I come up to. Without the utilization of ex post facto law, which means ex means away from, It's apart, away from, without. The <laughs> most equals notice afterwards. After what? <laughs> After the claim, their claim, their claim. You. And law, you take that document in your hands called Terms of Art now. Okay, it's in alphabetical order. Open that document up and turn to the word law. Find you, find that Terms of Art. This is what you're looking for here is our Terms of Art. Terms of Art is regulus. You know what regulus is? Regulus is the final alchemization, hypnotization, found at the end of alchemy. Sir Isaac Newton, 1796. Finally, his notes, he died 1806. Finally, his notes in 1796. He had figured out. He had got everything together and was now down to the final thing, which was the goal called Regulus. I think we have the terms of Ernie, did you have a lot of those? Because I don't have I only had, uh, I didn't have too much money to work on, so I apologize to you guys. Uh, if, if you don't have it, uh, please. Uh, give it's called call Terms of Art. It's called Terms of Art, and it'll be uh, 23 pages front and back. Is that the headline on, the, on the paper? It's called, uh, no, I'm sorry. It's, it's called idea. Terms of... I got a legal terms of control. That's it. Terms of legal control forward slash power. Yeah. Now, okay, because of the lengthy time, I always just call it terms of work. All the legal professionals call it terms of work. Okay. I will tell you for a fact that uh, there is a chief of the demons, chief of the Republicans, and the chief of the senators in uh, Helena tonight, and he is regulating all the good intention that all of us have. He is an unseen death angel in the way to bring curses and death upon everything that we're fighting for. And I'll tell you right up front that he appears as a shrink. He is under obligation, mark and seal of the Holy Roman Empire, hidden and unknown, backwards, retroactive, which requires a reflex activity, which means forward as well. That's confession backwards and profession forward to destroy in a manner unseen, unknown, through that document, in terms of legal control, forward slash power, he is there. 
in conjunction with legislative services, which is all what? Lawyers and attorneys and retired what? Hmm. Judges. Why are they there? <coughs> oh, they're the great high priests. How many of you is needing a set of those? That reminds me of what a comedian once said one time when he said, if pro cons are opposites, the opposite of progress is Congress. That's right. Well, Rogers said the only difference between death and Congress is that death doesn't get worse each time it convenes. <laughs> you know what that means. Okay. Regulus. Okay, so ex post facto law is going to lead us to regulus. That seems like a mighty far cry in between words, and it's taken me years to, to get there and figure it out. Law in the document of uh, terms of art, legal terms of control, forward slash power. Law in the western half of the hemisphere. Oh, you guys are going to love that. Where are we at? Western half of the hemisphere. Equals another Greek phrase called Lex Lares. Lex Lares sounds like liars, and that's pretty apt. And that equals tales, legends, myths, fables. Of what? Beowulf? Mm -hmm. Fables of deified Fred. Greek gods. That's what we're under. There's no actual law in the western half of the hemisphere. You will read the Hortus Conclusus, as it is called, the Garden of Conclusion. To that very definition in that document, I'll tell you that in 325 A.D., Constantine, Constantine caused this by not Putting us, I guess is the way to say it, putting us under Lex Legis, which is Roman code equals actual code. So, what do we not have here? <coughs> what is not in the western half of the hemisphere? We don't have Regis letters. We don't have that over the western half of the hemisphere. Now that document, so that you know who wrote that document, all those definitions, is a definition, is a uh, encyclopedia of evil terms that if you know how to test, I've done some testing on it through the Holy Spirit, and it turns out that that document, its intent and the collocution of it, the beginning to write it down with the intent and purpose, malintent, okay? begins at the fall of the Tower of Babel. What happened to the languages when the Tower of Babel fell? Everything went what? Upside down. And when it's upside down, you can make it go anywhere you want. Retroactive or proactive, doesn't matter. Okay? They claim retroactive because it's actual. They really were here before Adam and Eve. This was their kingdom at that time. Hmm. They had a form that was what the Bible calls angelic. Lucifer was what? An angel. An angel, an angel of light. Yeah. Yeah. Angel of light. What's his other names? Son of the morning star. Yeah. Morning singer. He was in charge of the choir. All the demons we see now were angels then. And they sang in perfect harmony. This planet operated perfectly. It had perfect balance, it had perfect pitch, it had perfection on it. Because there was no tainting of anything that God had created at that time. But, through deep study, what you're going to find out is that this bunch that causes the states to be forbidden from ex post, well, those of Greek gods and what have you, 
which is what they're going to evidence to you when you set your objection up. You'll have to use ex post facto law because that's the investigation they have to conduct on their own selves. When you say, no, I had a part of your Greek crap, bring forward and produce the actual natural forms. It's called form and natural auto. Sorry that we have to do Greek, but we have to do Greek if you're going to win them at your own battle. Natural auto. Being natural forms of evidence, not man made. Natural, God evidence. Bring forward and produce the form of natural evidence to the contrary that I am a child of the King of Kings, as are you.